welcome back to my channel. So this video has been a long time coming or at least a while. It's been in the process for a while. So I have been working on doing a few things in Corey and I's room just to like kind of refresh it, maybe kind of make it over, whatever you want to call it. And so I've actually been working on this for a couple days and I'm finally getting around to filming an intro for it and then I'm going to be doing the decorating or more so decorating part of it today. But I'm gonna show you guys everything I've been working on and there are some things in this that maybe you've seen before. Um, I've been collecting pieces and things to go in there uh, for the last little while but now I'm finally putting it all together. I'm also gonna be showing you how I do my DIY faux shiplap. It's super easy, at least in my opinion. I'm also super excited because I've got some special pieces for in the room that I'm so thrilled and uh, just can't wait to share with you. So I will be sharing that as well. So let's go ahead. I'll start with the first clips that I started with. I think I started it in an evening a few days ago and we will work our way through the progression of the things that I've done. All right, so I pretty much took everything out of here. I'm washing some of our bedding and getting ready to start doing this wall. So this wall, I'm going to be doing shiplap on, and if you guys have never watched me do this before, I just do a faux shiplap. I'll show you my method and everything that I do, and I would say probably about once a week, I get a question on where I got this wall hanging, and I actually made it. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step on how I made this, because um, I know I have so many new subscribers, and I think a lot of people haven't seen how I did this. This. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that over here I'm going to be putting some shelving between these windows these wall sconce little guys I've had for a really long time, but they're from Amazon and as you can see they plug into the wall So they're super like renter friendly You don't need to cut into the wall to do some cute wall sconces So I'm probably gonna take the plate part off of those whenever I do the shiplap part and then I've got something super special. I'm so excited to share with you guys, but I have some really special nightstands for in here with a story behind them and everything. Excited about that. And so I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead, go out in the garage and start off by cutting my board. For these shelves, I need to paint it. I have a black paint, they're going to be black shelves. And obviously tomorrow, since I'm starting this in the evening, um, I will be showing you more progress and then the finished product. It shouldn't take me too long. I'm really hoping to get pretty far into it tonight. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. And this is the rug I have in here. I love this rug. It is an Amazon rug. And then I have this leaning long mirror that I've had forever. And it was a clearance find at Walmart. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it wasn't much at all. And over here is my desk area. So I have some new decor items that I'm going to add in as I go, both on the shelves and then on the nightstands. And then you guys know that I normally have a faux fiddle leaf fig tree that sits here. So I'll be bringing that back in and I'll tell you guys where I got that because it's also a really great deal. So let's go out in the garage and get started. I started out by cutting my board in half and I don't know the exact measurements of this board because Corey actually got it for me and marked it for me and everything. So I just cut it in half and then took a little sanding block over the edges just to make sure that there wasn't any splinters or things sticking out of it from me cutting it. Next, I put the first coat of paint on, and I can't remember the exact name of this paint, but I will try to remember to leave it in the description box. If I forget, just remind me in the comments, um, and I'll let you know. I also use the same paint as you're gonna see to make the lines for the faux shiplap, and it's got a pretty good consistency. I really liked the finish of it, and I would recommend using this black for anything. It's just, it's really a good neutral black. Thank you. 
All right, I got some of the things I need to do this. So there's a couple ways to do this and I'm not even gonna go into it. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. I just feel like it looks more realistic. It looks more straight and yeah, I've just always done it this way. In our previous house, I did almost one wall in almost every room of the house. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a process. Once you get through the first step, it actually goes pretty fast. So I'm gonna take the wall hanging down and then I'm going to measure, I think, seven inches. You really could do whatever you wanna do, but I like to actually go on Lowe's website and find out what their uh, shiplap is marked at. I think it's seven inches, something like that. So I will go seven inches down from the ceiling. I start at the top and work my way down just because sometimes the floor and the ceiling are actually kind of crooked. And so if you do it from the floor and then work your way up, you may end up with a really crooked looking board <laughs> on the top line. So starting from, since your eye will follow the ceiling line a little bit more than the floor, you start from the top. So I will go from the top down. I will measure down, say seven inches, if that's the amount I go with. I can try to remember to tell you what I actually do then. And take my tape measure, make a little mark, go the whole way along, making a little mark every like two to three feet. And then I take this big level and I level it up with both, you know, the mar first mark into the next mark, and then I make a line across the level. Go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And it gives me a really straight level line. So I go through and do the pencil lines first, and then I'll show you the next step. So whenever I'm doing projects like this where it's time consuming but it's kind of repetitive, you know, you don't need to overthink what you're doing, um, I love to listen to podcasts or somebody motivational as far as a speaker or something like that. And I've also been really into listening to audiobooks lately. So that's what I was doing this night while I was doing all of this. All right, so I took the lights off and I only filmed myself doing like one or two of these lines because you really can't see it on camera. Maybe there you can if I step like really, really close, but um, it's kind of hard to see on camera. So now what I do is take painter's tape and I also took the headboard off and I have it leaning over here. Um, but I take painter's tape and I put it on either side of the line leaving like I don't even know how to explain it other than maybe like a nickel's width because I know a lot of people use that to actually hang real shiplap so just a very very thin line sorry my fingers look kind of dark from the pencil and um, I love frog tape I've actually used the blue tape to do this and it bled really bad um, and so I definitely prefer the frog tape. It usually comes out very clean. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this, um, will be a little easier for you guys to watch me do because you can actually see what I'm doing. And a lot of times I think for a wall, it takes me around two rolls. So if I run out of tape, I will just paint the top part first, move the tape. Cause I've done that before when I've ran out of tape. Um, I've moved the tape and you can just take it off the wall and stick it on the next line and use it there to paint that part on. So I'm definitely going to do at least as much as I can tonight and then maybe I'll have to move some of it tomorrow morning when it's all dry. We'll see.
This part is a little more satisfying to do just because I feel like I'm kind of halfway there whenever I do the taping. And one thing I do really recommend is if you can do as little tearing of the tape, like ripping it and then starting your tape piece over as you go along the line, it just helps keep it really, really smooth. And you know, you don't get any tiny little niches where there would be a seam or something like that. And the other thing that you you really need to do and as you're seeing me do this you can see it I'm taking my hand and really going across each piece of tape and making sure that it's solidly stuck to the wall so you don't have paint bleed in behind the tape I got about halfway down the wall and ran out of tape. I actually had to finish this strip with some of the blue tape. And I'm gonna go out in the garage and get the black paint to paint my lines. But before I do that, I'm also going to flip my shelves over because I'm sure they're dry by now and paint the other side with the first coat. I think it'll probably take about two coats to paint those shelves. The reason I said this is really great paint for this is because I've done this before with a paint that was too thin and it actually kind of like ran down the tape and then onto the wall where I didn't want it to be. But this paint is definitely a good, like, I don't know, I would say medium consistency. It's not super thick, but it's not super thin and it did really great coverage. I only had to do one coat and then I could let it dry and have it peel off. So this is actually the next morning. I let it dry completely um, through the night and then went ahead and peeled it off. And I actually did manage to do this all with one roll of tape. I didn't have a lot of extra um, just because I was peeling off pieces and then putting them back on down on the bottom lines. But even the second time around of it being stuck on the wall, it did really good. So I would recommend the green frog tape over the blue tape any day. Now that you're all caught up on everything that I've done, I am going to show you the really special pieces I mentioned earlier that I have for in here and give you a little backstory on them. All right, so it's these end tables and I am so thrilled with them. There's one over here as well and they have the hairpin legs. So one of my best friends, Lexi Lukanen, makes these gorgeous pieces and she is actually launching her shop at the end of this month. I'm so thrilled for her. She is doing a lot of side tables right now. If you guys don't follow her YouTube channel, her and her husband have a tree company. So all of her pieces are handmade and sustainably harvest, which is just awesome. It's trees that they take down whenever they're sick or gonna fall on someone's house or that type of thing. So you can get a little closer look and every single piece is totally different. So none of them are exactly the same. Her brand is called Strong Roots and this one actually has nails that are put in it let me get a little closer here so you can see the nails that are in it I love the character that's in it um, she knows that I really like 
light wood and so these are just perfect and then I have something else that's from her shop that I'm going to be using to decorate in here that I will show a little bit later Corey really loves the size of them because uh, I think that the only other side tables we've ever had have been pretty small and so these are nice and big and round and have a lot of space to put decor and things like that on and the legs give it that modern feel which I really really love so you guys can check out all of her info below I'll leave her Instagram and her YouTube um, like I said she's gonna be launching towards the end of this month and she also does tutorials and showing you guys how they go through the process of making these and she also sent me a clip and I'm gonna insert it here just of how these were made and the process So now that you got a peek into the tree company and the process with that, which I just think it's so neat. She is also doing like coasters and earrings and other things. Um, here is the shelving. And the reason I didn't film putting it up is because Corey actually put them up and it was very spur of the moment when he had a minute to do it. So these brackets are from Amazon and I think they were I, I want to say like around $10 for all four brackets. And then he just mounted them in with the anchors that came with it. So they're very sturdy, perfect. I'm so excited to put decor on these. And he did such a good job. Here is a few of the things that I have to decorate with. I'm just going to go ahead and look at putting things where I want them to be. These I will talk about in just a second. Um, they're something else that is from Strong roots so you guys can just watch me as I'm decorating and then I'll talk about everything that I'm putting up Alright, so here is the finished product and you guys know that I'm all about very minimal, simple, pretty decor. I love neutrals and things like that. So I have this mirror here. We've had this since we moved here and it is from Walmart. And these are some of the prints that are from my friend's shop. They just look so great. I love them so much. I'm actually thinking about doing, having her do something else for another area in our house, but they're so beautiful and this this fiddle leaf I've had for quite a while but it's from QVC. QVC has got the best 
priced fiddly figs and a lot of times they even have a code for them to have a certain amount off or they go on sale so if I can find a code or anything I will leave the link for this below and leave that info below as well then obviously my gorgeous nightstands here these little houses I get questions about them a lot they were in my dining room um, but they are from Target this is a diffuser from Amazon that I love you can make it different colors and does a really good job diffusing my lights here are from Amazon and love those the wall hanging here I'm actually going to in insert now um, how to make this and at least to my best of my abilities of how I filmed it it was kind of my own design and I went about it my own way I wouldn't necessarily call it macrame because you're not doing knotting and stuff with it um, but it is made with macrame cord all right so like I said I had made this soon after we moved in and I went ahead and measured the wall trying to find the center of the wall and also the center like of the bed and everything so that it wasn't too off with the where the bed was sitting against the wall and then from there I made marks on either side and hung up the dowel rod with small pieces of the macrame uh, string or whatever you want to call it rope and then I also secured it with monkey hooks and if you don't know what that is just google it but it can hold a pretty good amount of weight okay I cut one cord to show you how I'm sticking it across the dowel rod and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I got the dowel rod at Lowe's and it was like literally $4 and for this size, I can't remember what size around it is. It might be like an inch, maybe something like that. It comes in 72 inches, I think. And that's pretty much exactly the, the width of a king size bed. So it worked out, but I think, don't take my word for it, you could check. But I think that they can cut them for you right at Lowe's. So if you had a smaller bed or just wanted to do this in a smaller scale, you could have them do that. All right, so to um, put these strands on, I have them, have this one cut like this, and I'm gonna cut some more. And all I do is lift it out, put the strand over. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but just to show you, I think I can. And then pull the string the last little tail through and then just tighten it like that then I got this stuff I have no idea what this is and I'm gonna weave it through the top of it so I'll kind of show you once I get going on that part of it so I went along and basically just did this every other uh, strand and then it just kind of wove it right in and worked perfectly and then because it was kind of wooly feeling that stuff I put in between I was able to just tuck it right behind the wall hanging and it held just fine and then I gave it a little haircut till I liked it and that is it the bedspread I believe is from Amazon. Like I said, I'll link everything that I can. These pillows covers are from Amazon. Um, and then over here, this little fiddle leaf guy, he's fake and he's from Big Lot. I thought I would get a little bit closer. And the little guy here is from Hobby Lobby. And then this is one of Corey's work hats. Like this is his side of the bed. So a lot of times his things end up over here. Then the shelving. So my idea with this shelf up here is that I would do like some kind of draping viney kind of plants that would come off of the side of it. I'd love for this to kind of be a plant shelf. I just haven't gotten any new ones to put up here. So wait for that. Um, these letters, obviously our initials are from Big Lots. This guy's actually from Big Lots from like a year ago, I think. Then these little candle houses or whatever you want to call them, lanterns, um, are from Ikea. This basket here is actually from Aldi, but you can find them a lot of places. They're one of those that collapses and then the rug is from Amazon. I'm just so happy with how all of this looks. I'm driving, you're smiling, just really doing nothing. That's the thing I like about you. And we keep on driving We just do what we wanna do Yeah 
thank you guys so much for watching today and if you're new here i'd love it if you hit the subscribe button i do tons of homemaking cooking cleaning decorating type videos and don't forget to leave a comment and i'll see you guys in my next video Let's